You're listening to Parasearch Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch Radio or their affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Hello everybody, we are obviously live from this year's Sage Paracon. We are obviously at Coombe Abbey. This is our first guest speakers we are interviewing and that is Greg and Dana Newke. Welcome guys. Thank you for having us. We're so excited. Cool. Um, Hi guys, it's me by the way. It's your usual host, Carl Hutchinson. Uh, Day three of Sage Paracon 4, live at Coombe Abbey. Um, It's been an interesting couple of days. A lot of hard work, lack of sleep, but good fun. Um, but yeah, we're joined t- uh, today we're by Dana and Greg Newkirk. Um, so welcome. Thanks again. Yeah, thank um, and uh, how are you finding the UK? Oh my gosh, we're in love. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It is, and everything is so haunted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, crazy. it's so funny because even like last night, Dana I, I woke me up in the middle of the night because she was jumping in the covers and pulling them up over her and I was like what's going on she's like there's somebody in our room I heard someone shuffling across the carpet and I definitely got under the covers faster than I have ever in my entire life <laughs> and I just pulled them up right to my eyes so it was just my eyes poked out like looking around in the darkness I didn't see anything but I definitely heard some across the carpet yeah. it's a very interesting building yes. it's got so much history um, anybody out there that's listening, go and have a look on the, go on the website, go and look at Coombe Abbey Hotel in Coventry. The history of it, there's no other hotel that I've ever been to that has in the ground floor an actual tomb of a, a, a murdered monk. Yeah. Um, which is just incredible. Mm-hmm. It's great. And, uh, last night we were treated to some of the most famous ghost stories from the place yeah. by uh, one of the, uh, the tour guides. And oh my gosh, yeah. it's the craziest thing. So as Americans... It's crazy to be in a country and in a, sleeping in a building that's older than our country. That's it's much crazy. older than a country. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Uh, because we just, you know, it's funny. And the further the west you go in our country, the newer everything is. Mm. So you have to go uh, all the way to, to New England and, and America yeah. to find the old stuff. And even then, it's nothing compared no. to here. So we're thrilled <laughs> Yeah, to be we're here. feeling very, very spoiled at the moment. Yeah. I don't know. You're kind of ruining... Uh, Haunted locations for us. Yeah, for sure. America, be like, I don't know if this is ever going to live up to this. Yeah. <laughs> One of you guys is going to have to adopt us. Oh, yes. Please. No worries. The Sage Tribe will adopt anyone. Anyway. Perfect. <laughs> they, they literally will take you on board and love you. As you can probably see, I by, can tell. As, as we, we just had the, the Q and A session with all the speakers, um, and some of the interesting facts uh, were very, very um, interesting and quite funny. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so people, the speakers are getting to know the, uh, the guests. But um, for yourselves, obviously, just for anybody that's listening that don't actually know what you guys do, mm-hmm. one question is, where have you been? Why haven't you watched it? Um, <laughs> just want to give us a quick overview of like your backgrounds and how you actually are here now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dane and I actually are childhood enemies. We, we were we hated each other. We it's had, actually really funny because it's a very similar story to MJ and Duncan. Yeah, yeah, we had rival ghost hunting teams back when we were in our young days. Geo Cities. Geo Cities. Page Maker website. Yes, if anyone remembers that, we had more than twenty people on the website that would crash. Yes, and they were an all boys team, and we were an all girls team. And as I'm sure you can imagine, it ended in calling each other names on the internet no 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 what happened was, well i did it great listen, what happened was dana and her friends got a television show and us young boys we were very upset about it and very jealous so we dealt with it in a very mature manner we recreated their entire website except with photos of us in drag <laughs> and every word of this is true by and, the way and then, and then we is there any photos of that? there are <laughs> photos. Our photos I will make sure that you see that I have to see Greg I drag absolutely I was, I was Dana he was he had a witch hat on and everything <laughs> and then uh, we SEO bombed the website so everybody looking for them would find us instead mm-hmm. really and, uh, real nice Greg yeah. and then years later he and a friend of his uh, from his team drove to Canada looking for us to apologize and 
with every, the creepiest way possible, printed out photos of us, and just came to our town. You wouldn't started, answer my emails. He started asking around, and it took him a grand total of, what, 45 minutes? To, yeah. To find me, which is I'm a good detective. alarming. <laughs> a little alarming. And now we're married. And now we're married. So, there we go. Yeah. So there you go. Be mean to the girls you like, boys. <laughs> but that's when we kind of joined. Terrible advice. We joined forces and um, have worked on lots of projects that are in the parent in the vein of the paranormal and we started the traveling museum and we've traveled across America with our weird haunted objects and then um, got together with Carl Pfeiffer and Connor Randall and we're doing Hellier. Yeah. Mm, uh, talking about Hellier because um, I, like everybody else um, here t- this weekend, have binge watched it. I think I've watched it in a, in a complete day. Our mm-hmm. first episode. I love it. Just like, wow. It makes me so happy. I love it right now. Um, I, obviously, any, uh, for anybody that didn't know, you obviously got this strange email. Yes. How did, how did you think, okay, I'm going to take this email, mm-hmm. and how did you then progress to think, right, I'm going to actually document this? In 2012, I got an email from a man who claimed that there were little creatures coming out of a mine shaft on the edge of his property in rural Kentucky, very little mining town by the name of Hellier. And he said these creatures were coming out of this mine shaft. They were tapping on his kid's windows. They were stealing his kid's toys and tools. And eventually they ended up taking his dog. And, I mean, we get a lot of strange emails because of what we do. And so I was like, well, you know, this is one of my friends put me on. Uh, and then he sent photographs. He sent photographs of these three-toed footprints, a lot of them. And, I mean, listen... I want to believe that all this stuff is real, but mm-hmm. I'm pretty, was pretty skeptical of this because it's not every day you get a case of gobble, right? Yep. I was a ghost hunter, too, and so it didn't really make any sense. <laughs> so I sent those footprints to a bunch of Bigfoot hunters that I know because they're the only people I know that really deal with footprints. And they said, you know, you should probably take these seriously because they have dermal ridges on them, which are almost like fingerprints for your feet, mm-hmm. and they're notoriously hard to fake. So they said, you should probably look into this seriously. And I went, okay, all right, let's do it. So I started emailing back and forth to the guy, and then one day he disappeared. And I thought, oh, okay, well, that's all That's all there is to that. Well, fast forward, our friend Carl Pfeiffer, who uh, he was on a Ghost Hunters Academy and Ghost Hunters International, he wanted to make a film. And he heard this interview that I was giving where they were asking me about this case. And I was like, well, you know, it's kind of a cold case. It's pretty weird. He heard this. And it just, for some reason, he had all these synchronicities that surrounded him mm. hearing it. And he called me up and he was like, we've got to go make this. This is a movie. We've got to go make this. And I was like, man, I don't know. Are you really going to find any goblins? <laughs> this is, we don't know what we're walking into. But he was like, nope, it's important. We have to do this. We need to do this. And so one day, he and Connor drove out from Colorado, and we went to to Hellier and tried looking for this guy, David Christie, and it just opens up this can of worms Mm. that, you know, now we're we're getting ready to put season two out in three weeks, and it's gone places I never would have anticipated. Yeah, that's the thing that I I was so fascinated with, the Hellier part of it. It's like an onion. onion. Yes. Mm. Every time you got... Yes. Another, and you got taken down another level, yes. and then you just kept on like going bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. And it, it happens to such a great effect in the second season. The second season is great. Like what's fun is we got to watch the rough cuts on the plane here. Final episode in our hotel room here, yeah. and we just cried mm-hmm. when we watched the last episode because it was so good, and it really tells this story in such a wonderful way. I think people are going to be fascinated by how deep that onion goes mm. and where these tendrils lead to because there are far-reaching implications for you know, not just things like cryptozoology and, and extraterrestrials, but for, for magic and for the occult and for ghosts and all of that type of stuff. I think people who watch it, which is really our, our, our biggest our biggest pride in this project is how many people have read books they've never read before yeah. because of it. Yeah. And they're going to do so much more of that in the second season. Well, yeah, because I was, I was, when I was watching um, the first series, 
hang on, I need to look at it. And then mm-hmm. you start looking into it, yeah, you start yeah. researching. I gotta get the Mothman yeah. prophecies. Yeah, exactly. Well, I, I knew about the Mothman because I'd, I'd, I'd done a bit of research yeah. on the Mothman. Because where I live, there's a UK Mothman. Oh, right, right, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, I'm down, aware. yeah yes. down near where I in, in Deal. And I had a friend of mine from um, the cargo come over. Yes. And she wanted to go to these places. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm driving her around, showing in, in eyes and everything like that. So I knew about the Mothman. And then obviously, then some of the other stuff, I was like, you know that. And you start, and I think that's good because it it opens your mind to it. Exactly. And I think it was so interesting to watch because it it wasn't like a normal, it felt like you you were part of it. Oh, for sure. Like you were there with you guys. That's what we were, we were really hoping for that. And I think, I was going to say, I think a lot of the time, what we really wanted to do is just, do it justice and show what real investigating is like. Because sometimes, when, as everyone knows, when you're investigating the paranormal, you come up against dead ends. Mm. And, and sometimes it's not always the most amazing things that happen right away. So we wanted to make sure that it felt that way and that it felt like you were with us in Hell Year on that adventure. You experienced the same frustration we did yeah. when we hit a dead end. You, you experienced the same excitement we did when there was a crazy synchronicity or a big lead or that same anxiety that we felt when we were you know at the gas station and we knew people were wondering who we were and whether we didn't know whether we were safe or not we wanted people to feel that along with us we had hoped that we kind of conveyed that so it's really nice hearing that that, no no it was was. you just felt you were like in in there and it was like you already said the gas station Mm -hmm. and there was also (laughs) the bit where you thought you were being watched oh yeah yeah Yeah. when you're out on the porch Mm -hmm. yes I Something thought, was throwing yeah. rocks at us. Yeah, and like, I thought that was that was just incredible. And obviously, the the experiment you did with um, the, the spirit box mm-hmm. yeah. on the porch, yeah, yeah. I literally mm-hmm. watched that about fifteen times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just kept on going back. It's crazy because you were, I was picking up on different things. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah it was amazing. So you say earlier two, yes, mm-hmm. in the can, mm-hmm. first episode. Mm-hmm. When is it going to come out? Just for everybody, uh, November 29th. The whole season will come out at once, same way we did the first season. It'll be on Amazon Prime exclusively for the first two weeks. And then the Friday the 13th, it comes out uh, in December for everyone, everywhere. Uh, and this, and unlike the first series, there are how many episodes? There are 10 episodes. I can't believe it. I yeah. don't know if I'm supposed to say that yet. But. I know. We've been, we, we weren't sure if we were supposed to, and once we said it once, we were like, man, let's just keep telling people. <laughs> 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 so yeah, 10 episodes. That can be- they don't steal any thunder. Sorry, Carl. Sorry, don't Carl. Don't do that enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got the new series, yeah. which is I, I can't wait to see. Um what else is going on in your guys' lives? Um, apart, I mean, obviously, apart, because you've obviously been extremely busy with that. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's been, we've been living in Hellier Land for a while. We have. And we're almost, like, we're at this point now where it feels like, as gross as it sounds, it feels like we're giving birth. It does. And we're just ready for the baby to be out. Mm-hmm. We're, we're that, then, yeah. We're late can, pregnant, so we're just like, oh, we have heartburn, we're just ready for it to be done. We're ready for it to be done. So we're going to birth it into the world, <laughs> and then uh, we jump right back into another project we're doing with Carl, which is a documentary about one of the artifacts in the museum. Yep. Um, we have a piece that uh, is the first time we've ever had to take a piece back to where it was taken from. Okay. Um, there was a, a statue that was taken from a cave in the Catskill Mountains by a couple hikers, and we clearly had never seen a horror movie before. Because I don't know why anyone would have taken this statue. Mm-hmm. And uh, it caused them a bunch of problems. They sent it to us. It caused us a bunch of problems, other people problems. And so one day we just coordinated the time to take it back. And Dana coordinated this massive ritual with like 120 witches all over the world. And uh, we did a big ritual and unbound it and buried it and made a replica. And it got kind of hairy. And that's the replica you brought over yeah. where you had some problems with TSA. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> TSA. They, it's so funny. Anywhere we go, it doesn't matter. Anytime we have to get on a plane, TSA will always pull us aside for something. We and just so expect it. We just expect it. Yeah. And the woman at the TSA, uh, she was like, excuse me, sir, do you have a, a, a voodoo doll? Uh, and I was like, huh? She's like, oh, this thing was... It looks like there's like nails in the face, and I was like, "Oh yes!" I was like, "That's mine." And she's like, "Is that? Will that? Can I?" And I was like, "You can touch it. Yes, it's just, it's just a replica. Don't worry." And she's like, "Well, what, you know, what's the what's the deal?" And I was like, "Well, you know, it's it's a replica of this thing that was cursed, and we deal with this and this." And she's like, "You know what? You're fine. Just take it." 
this, this, this guy. It's so funny because that I find more often than not is the response that the TSA agents will give us. They're so freaked out by whatever we brought that we kind of, they're just like, just, just take it. <laughs> okay, so there's a tip for you, everybody you who's go. listening. Yeah, I'll call it <laughs> like I did, I did drugs in the haunted island. <laughs> you, you just won't, you'll just get through uh, man, security, no problem. Just say you're a ghost hunter. Exactly. And, and you, you're fine, you're fine. It's fine. <laughs> so, Craig Farragher, mm-hmm. first time here. Yeah. yeah. How are you enjoying it? It's oh amazing. My, it's incredible. It's, it's fantastic. So There's a really great... Uh, you can tell it's a big family, mm-hmm. for sure. And uh, MJ and the entire Sage Paracon tribe has treated us unbelievably well. Yeah. Um, got me absolutely blasted through the first time we were here. I can't drink with you guys because you are a horrible influence. <laughs> I never, I never do that. Someone, someone mentioned someone else who had drank a lot last night. We asked him how he was feeling this morning, and he said very delicate. And we both burst out laughing because we were like, "That's way. exactly how I felt yesterday morning. I was very delicate." But aside from the booze, yes. it has been fantastic, and it's cool. The funny thing is, uh, MJ has done a really fantastic job picking her speakers mm-hmm. because we keep joking about how we wanted to meet Calvin and Karen. But we had to come to the UK to do it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is so funny. Yeah. We had to come here to do it. So it's great. I think it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it's I'm excited wonderful. for all the lectures. And, yeah. And you celebrated your birthday as well. Oh, that's, uh, when is it? Oh. His birthday is the 11th. So the 11th it's not Monday? Quite here yet. But you did get a very unbelievable gift for your birthday. Oh, my God. And there are some pictures on social media. There are. The best, the best reaction I've ever seen to anybody opening a present. So... A little bit of backstory. Mm-hmm. I am a, a massive X Files nut. I, when I was a kid, I wasn't allowed to watch it. My dad's a Baptist minister, and it's kind of scary. And <laughs> they, they, you know, they didn't want me into the occult. But I would sneak and watch it on a little black and white TV in my room under the blankets. And I loved the X Files so much that uh, you know Fox Mulder is part of the reason why I'm even here right now. I would probably not be doing any of this if it wasn't for the influence of of this fictional character. So I've always had a great affinity for him. And uh, MJ and uh, Liz coordinated the best birthday present ever because they went <laughs> they went and got David Duchovny to sign a Hellier poster. And I literally lost my mind. <laughs> he did. He... The picture is amazing because I, I look like a six-year-old kid getting his Nintendo at Christmas. It's a little... Absolute 100% pure joy on his face. They've done good. That, yeah, and that is going to take up some yeah. unique and wall real estate, yeah. I think, in the yeah. office. Oh, yeah. Sure. It's amazing. Okay. So, with your talk, yeah. obviously, for anybody that's not here, um, give them an understanding, just to not obviously don't go into too much detail. What are you going to actually be discussing? You're going to be discussing the earlier or various other things? Well, we were going to talk about two of the craziest cases we've ever worked on. We we have a, a Hellier surprise tomorrow. So we're probably going to do most of our Hellier discussion tomorrow. Okay. And today it's just going to be, a, there are two particularly interesting haunted object cases that will give people a new idea about what haunted objects are and how maybe we should treat them. Mm-hmm. And then tomorrow, I think it's at 10 a.m., mm-hmm. we, uh, we have a little surprise about Hellier and we'll talk a little bit about Hellier and probably Hellier's second season and what people can expect and maybe we'll some behind-the-scenes the fun, too. Yeah, well, when we're on live tomorrow uh, for the radio show, um, you'll all be jealous because we'll give you a little bit of an idea. We won't go into any details, but we'll just say what we want and what we do. Yeah, I love it. I love uh, it. So that's an exclusive for Sage Yeah. Um, so I know you guys are really, really busy. So I'm going to let you go now. This was fantastic. Um, and we're just going to carry on. We'll be probably grab you again. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. To come you back on tomorrow. Let's do so, it. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, have you, and just for the, the listeners, how do, how do they get in touch with you? Where, do you are, where can they find you guys? Yeah. If people are curious about Hellier and they want to watch it, the first five episodes are free. Uh, you can go to hellier.tv. If you're curious about the work we do at the museum, you can go to paramuseum.com. And if you're just curious about Dana and I, you can go to weirdhq.com. 
and uh, that's kind of the top of the umbrella. You can find all of our social media and stuff there too. No problem. Um, well, thanks. Uh, we're going to carry on uh, on there for a little bit longer because these guys are obviously extremely popular today. Oh, okay. um, and <laughs> and the talks will be finishing shortly, and they'll be going into a lunch session. So they're going to go back to their schools. Thanks again, again. And thanks I'll be chatting to you again, yeah, no, and we'll get you on again um, after we'll do a more uh, more. Uh, Full blown into this. Sounds awesome. good. No Sounds problem. Great. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Have a great day. Bye. Thanks, Yeah, so, yeah, that was obviously uh, Greg and Dana Newkirk, um, the guys behind Elliot. Um, and what you did, obviously, it's just short interviews uh, at the moment because obviously they, they're pretty busy, they've got commitment, they've got people that want to obviously talk to them. So we're doing quick short birth. Um, we will be back on in uh, a little while. We're going to be still on for a little bit longer anyway. We just want to obviously just tell you about the first couple of days and some of the reasons why we never got a chance to do some of the Facebook lives that we advertised. Um, but yeah, we'll be on again at 2.30 with the amazing Claire Barrett. Uh, Barrett. Um, so we'll be talking about her books, what she's going up to. So we'll be back on we'll be in another live at 2.30. But me and Sam, we've been, we, um, we arrived. Um, I arrived on Wednesday. Um, obviously, after picking all the guests up and ferrying them around, we arrived at Coom Abbey. Um, and anybody that hasn't experienced Coom Abbey, just go to the website. Just to drive into the... Um, reception into the, the courtyard is amazing it's just this mile driveway and it's, it's a bit like out of something out of Downton Abbey <laughs> massive house that suddenly appears in the middle of the countryside um, so the reason we haven't been able to do um, a lot of our normal lives and posting stuff from the stage at the moment is that we've been having extreme issues with wi-fi and stuff like that so we do apologize but we have found a spot now we can do our radio interviews and we'll be doing a few more. Um, hopefully we'll be able to do uh, some lives in the vendor's rooms uh, upstairs. So, first night, Thursday, um, was the investigation part of Sage Chronicle. Um, and Sam was actually uh, part of the investigation. I had my Sage Paracon full hat on, so I was running around making sure the groups were... In, in the correct area. So we were investigating five locations of Coombe Abbey. We had um, the uh, Abbey Gate, uh, which, is, uh, which is like the stable area, which has been converted into a, a, a one particular room, and they have another room next to it, which is a bar area. So that's, they were two locations, so you had the main area and then the bar area. And then we had three of the most haunted and active bedrooms in the hotel. Each of the speakers um, and a couple of other helpers that uh, MJ um, asked to come along uh, just to help out with, with what was going on, um, came along. So we had um, no more than eight in a group um, and we basically gave them 45 minutes in each section and we swapped them around. Um, and obviously, I'm going to pass you over to Sam just to give you an idea of some of the investigation sides of it, um, just to give you an idea of what you guys have missed. And what I would say, I'm just going to keep it short now, and I'll pass it over to Sam, is seriously, if you were thinking, oh, I'll buy a ticket, I'll buy a ticket, and never got round to do it, and you're kicking yourself that you didn't turn up, get tickets for next year. Um, it's going to be amazing next year. Um, and we'll be talking about that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, get tickets because you miss one most amazing yeah. investigation. Yeah. So I'm just going to pass you over to Sam and I'm going to do a kind of interview with Sam. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> um, so obviously you were you, you set in your groups. Yeah. And um, so where, where was your first, first in, uh, part that you investigated? No, that's <laughs> God. Try and remember now. Um, it was with. Oh my God, who was it with now? <laughs> um, I think. 
Uh, Jolene and Claire Barron. Yeah. In the, I can't even remember was, the name it was, of it. It yeah. was at the bottom. It was like yeah. Lady it? Craven. Something like that. Yeah, I think it was the Lady Craven suite. Um, so you were obviously doing stuff. Yeah. How did you feel the investigations went? Really well, obviously, because I experienced stuff, because I haven't really investigated for a little while. So this was my proper investigation for ages. And um, there was like a freaky moment when you were with Car- Karen and Calvin. You were with Karen and Calvin in the investigation did like Ouija board work and things like that. Paul went for like a quick break and I could turn my head and I saw like a I'd say it's a shadow person, whatever you want to call it, and I thought it was Carl because he had that same structure and Calvin's like, what's up with you? And so we had to kind of, you know, get Calvin to be the model <laughs> so I could show everyone where I'd seen it. Yeah, because I'd, I'd actually stepped out of the room. Um, this was in the, the, the stable. The stable block. Um, the main area. I'd actually stepped out of the room because uh, I had to go and. Um, Make sure that was that all the other areas that I was managing were all okay. So I'd, every so often, not with security, not with security guard, I have a wander around. So I'd stepped out. So I then came back in, and, and Sam's face was a picture. And I was like, what, what, what? <laughs> um, and then Alex, uh, one of the other guests, was saying she she thought she saw you. I said, no, I've been outside. I've been wandering around for the last fifteen minutes. So I wasn't anywhere near the place. So that's obviously a weird moment for you. Yeah. Um, anything else during the investigation that you could say, right, you could put your finger on was stood out? Well, we were in the um, Oliver's room, I think they call it, where MJ was, and obviously it's like a bedroom and a lounge area. And like last year we were all sat in the bedroom, but this year we were sat in the lounge area and it. MJ was doing an EVP session and I kept sneaking into the other room because someone was sat in the chair and I asked the question, uh, are you sitting in the chair in the other room and MJ just gave me that pat look of kind of like, you can see it too. Um, but yeah, we know, like, we're not going to spoil any EVPs for you but we got some pretty decent class EVPs but obviously they need to cleared and tidied up a little bit before obviously it goes public. Yeah. Just letting you know, the noise in the background is um, Claire hit me, made it for um, It's her cook and just finished. So people are filing out and uh, it's now the lunch break. Um, so um, that's what you're going to hear. Because we are right in the middle of Sage America. It's, we're not away from everybody. We are literally right here uh, as it happens. Um, and what we're going to be also doing later on, we're going to hopefully, be, if, if connections work, we're going to be t- we're going to be going up uh, into the vendors' room. Um, as we say today, we're going to be we've just talked to the amazing Greg and Dana, Yuka. Um, we've got Claire Bowen coming on. We're also going to be talking to Claire Hinks, and then uh, later on in the afternoon, um, we've got the amazing and funny. Um, and anybody uh, that's been to Sage Paracon 3 um, or has seen social media will know how funny, talented Karen is. So we'll be talking to Karen as well. Um, we're going to wrap it up now because it's, it's just going to get noisier and noisier. Um, so just thank you. This is our first uh, little snapshot. It's only a short one this time. Then we'll, the, the shows will get longer and longer as, as the weekend goes over. We, we just wanted to just come on board do the show, obviously because Greg and Dana are extremely popular uh, because of the, because of everything they do in this field. Um, they've got other commitments, so that's I do apologise. They would have wanted to obviously have their time, longer, but they are they're promised they're going to come on um, and do uh, more talks with us as the weekend goes on. Um, so thanks again. Um, keep, keep an eye out on social media for updates of when our next live will happen. Um, we have lives at 2.30, 3.30 and 4. We will be posting them. Um, we will be basically uh, updating people on social media. Um, so, once again, from myself. Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. 
Okay, perfect. Um, and I would just like to say thanks again. And if you're sitting there thinking, damn, I should have got my ticket for this year, um, there are still some day tickets available uh, for tomorrow. So go to www.sageparacon.co.uk uh, if you're thinking about coming tomorrow. Um, and I will just wrap that up. So thanks everybody again for listening. And we will be back live in a little while with Claire Barry. Uh, thanks again. And uh, it's been fun. And we'll tell you some more interesting stuff that's happened over the last two days. So that I'll sign it off now. Sage Parrot on day three opener. Uh, thank you very much. And we will talk to you soon. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us for more shows throughout the week. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web to keep up to date with all the shows right here on Parasearch Radio.